Good morning, my name is Peter from 1800 Shutters. I've been in the business now about 12 years and if ever I come across a situation that I don't know the answer to, there's only one man I call, Scott Slow. Hello, I'm uh, Scott Sloan. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today about uh, plantation shutters. So, um, how to determine what a good plantation shutter is to what a not so much a bad plantation shutter, but um, the variations of how you can how we can help you determine what a good shutter is or a good value for money shutter is compared to one that's not so good value for money. Price is not always the answer, um, and you can be burnt in many different ways. So the key areas of a good plantation shutter. Um, are generally determined in, in many, many ways, and it's more down to the, a lot of the smaller detail that goes into the plantation shutter. Um, here I have a sample of a typical plantation shutter that most people will just say, yep, it's a white plantation shutter. If that was put next to another white plantation shutter, you would be able to determine and see a lot of the different detail that goes into this one, as opposed to another one next to it, but they both look like a white plantation shutter up close, um, from a distance. So um, when they're compared up close, you will notice a lot of variations in, in what makes a good shutter to a not so good plantation shutter. Um, yeah. Okay, so some of the things that, uh, for you to look for in relation to detail or no detail. Um, on a good plantation shutter, the finer detail are things like a simple little cap that goes in to cover the blade tension screw. On a bad quality shutter, they won't have any. Okay, it's the simple scenario of whether it's got the smaller detail in your value for money that you think you are purchasing. Um, other things are other holes where production line holes, this has been capped. Other uh, plantation shutters don't have that detail. Um, blade ends. Another very, very good valid point in the plantation shutter industry to determine a quality shutter to a not so good quality shutter. Uh, the blade ends. So when you come in close here, run your finger along the edges of the blade ends. You should find they're very smooth, nice and smooth when it comes to timbers you will find a bit, a bit more of a sandpaper feel when it comes to a PVC type shutter. But the blade ends should be painted beautifully um, and, and nicely seared. So the end grains of the ends of the panels should also be nice and smooth. Um, we'll look at some end grain here. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. A not so good quality plantation shutter you will actually notice if you look closely on a PVC type shutter or um, other model shutters, you'll actually see if you come in close enough, there's some saw blade lines here where, there's, where the circular saw has sliced through the PVC. The manufacturer of that particular product hasn't had any detail at all or any attention to detail on the shutter. It's just purely been uh, sliced off on a saw and said, here you go, there's your shutters, stick them in the window. Um, some other detail we'll go into is where the structure of the panel comes together. So when you get a style and a, and a rail coming together, so this is the example, so that's exactly those two pieces there. Okay, so when those two joints come together, in a good quality plantation shutter they will use a mortise and tenon joint. Okay, so there's only two pieces of timber or two pieces of PVC come together and they work as one. So in the hot and the cold part of the climate, you get some shrinkage and expansion issues, and over time, a poor quality shutter, if it hasn't been done with a mortise and tenon, it's only been done with some typical uh, small timber dowels, the joint will eventually open up and you'll end up with daylight coming between your joints, okay? And, and uh, what they call panel sagging issues. Uh, with a mortise and tenon joint, that won't happen. Now. Uh, other things to point out are the actual joints in the structure. So after it is actually had the uh, structure done at the factory, they will fill the seams in between the style and the rail in all of the joints. Turn it over, front and back, everywhere on it will be nicely sealed and nicely finished. In a 
not so good. Well, not so well finished plantation shutter. You will see some inherent variations with with your seaming. If you come in close, it's not too bad across here, but then you get to here and you'll notice a big change in light. So there is actually a, a seaming defect in that plantation shutter there. Um, this one here is actually pretty good, but it automatically it's it's already showing some signs of variation. Um, on the back here, this one here is a little bit more open than the other one as well. It's pretty bad along there, and then it gets better there. So there's some complete inconsistencies in the way that it's constructed. These are things that go to you to create value for money. So if you want a cost cut and save five dollars or save ten dollars, this is the sort of stuff that you're going to be looking at. They're going to cut corners to give you the price. Um, that doesn't mean to say that you can't get a good value for money in plantation shutter at a very good price. Okay, there was just one other thing I'd like to uh, point out to you to determine, again, difference between a value for money product and a not so good value for money product. Um, and we allude to the connecting rod, that, that, uh, which is called in the industry called a tilt rod, um, because it actually tilts all the louvers together. Uh, it's not to grab as, a, as a, a rod, it's generally on the back of the panel and you control your louvers as such. Um, now, quality of rod. If you look closely down this rod here, you'll actually see it's very, very flimsy. Okay, this one even has a dent, has a bend in it. Um, not hard to do. The other thing is, is they, the manufacturing process, they put a small cut inside the blade. So where the tilt rod sits, sits inside the blade. Now, there are many different charters out there and, and depending on how thick that tilt rod is, they might have upgraded the quality of the tilt rod but that means the cut has to be deeper into your blade. If you're buying a timber shutter, that's a common thing to look out for as a possible problem that you will have down the track. Um, by buying a timber shutter, if you have got an internal cut inside where the tilt rod is sitting, it will eventually, over time, create hairline fractures on the internal cut of that. And you could end up with a problem of uh, a blade being needed to be replaced because of that because of that crack line, your tilt rod could possibly detach from the louver as well, becomes another problem for you. If the shutters have been installed over a period of around uh, four or even longer, four months or even longer, um, paint variation that's been exposed to UV will change against your replacement blade, so you'll end up with um, the original, blade, original panel and blade here and the original panel and blade here, but your replacement blade will stand out brighter because it was done in a completely different batch. So, they're things to look out for. So this common problem here has created a problem for you later. So think about it. Um, when it comes to a decent quality shuttle, uh, this particular type of uh, construction has been done fairly well. He, uh, the tilt rod is a lot stronger, so there's no flimsiness in that rod. They have not cut any of the blade away at all. So that won't pose a problem for you later to have to actually change that blade or have a fracture point uh, or a jarring point through the louver. Um, in actual fact, when you look at it, it actually tucks quite neatly into the, into the side of the shutter. And, the, and this company here has actually routed out the side of the, the back of the style. So when you look at it, you actually don't see your rod. We'll go back to uh, detail again. So on this particular shutter here, we've got a different type of uh, joining process. Now the joining process here, you can see, it's sort of just been where the saw, saw blade cuts were here across the rail. You can see lots of little air pockets and things like that in here. So you can see as I move that panel there, the joint actually opens up. Hopefully you can see that. I'm not, not sure whether you can, but there's a lot of movement in that panel. What that movement in that joint will create is issues where the panel, when it's been installed in an opening, will create what they call a, a panel sag. Um, a decent structured panel should not have any panel sag at all. You might end up with some um, uh, hinge jiggle or whatever after the installation or whatever, but um, it, the panel itself should not have any uh, structural sag. So we'll put this, I'm gonna get, try and do an example for you if it comes up or not. So I'll put that on the ground and try and flex this sideways. There is absolutely no movement in the panel whatsoever. 
we put that next to this one, just a little bit narrow, and we move this, we can see the joint here automatically is trying to open here. See the joint open up? Okay. So this might be okay for six, 18, maybe two or three years you might get out of it. But if there's a long-term purchase for value for money, again, we'll come back to the value for money, is that some shutters won't cut it over time. You'll probably find yourself uh, uh, paying for new ones later on. Okay, so another thing I wanted to point out for you when you do have, uh, uh, you are obtaining uh, quotations of uh, plantation shutters for your home, is variation in paint and uh, paint finish. So um, there are many, many different types of paints used in the industry, nitrocellulose, uh, two-pack poly, or, or PU as they call it, polyurethane, similar to kitchens. Um, and also there's water base. Now, there's a very big global push for uh, water based paints to be used in the future. So there will be a massive change globally for plantation shutters in relation to the paints used in those uh, for multiple of reasons, uh, i.e. being um, you know, the ozone layer, um, oc health and, uh, and safety in the workplace for the uh, manufacturer uh, workers that are spraying the paints. Um, and water base is a big, big push because it's um, environmentally friendly and also recyclable. A quality paint finish on a plantation show. You will notice the difference of this. If you feel and touch the sample panel that, that the salesperson in front of you is going to present to you, make sure you don't touch it with your fingers, uh, with the front of your fingers, but the back of your, back of your hand, and run the back of your hand across the surface of the style or the rub, and and try and feel for what feels like, kind of like a chalkboard effect or like a jib rock wall type effect. A, bit, a little bit rough, not so uh, silky smooth. A quality paint finish will have a beautiful finish and generally will have a, around about a semi-gloss sheen to it. So it means the manufacturer is confident in the painting ability of what they're producing and they will back it up with a nice sheen, a nice luster. Now, in a... Um, in not so high standard uh, plantation shutters, a lot of manufacturing plants coming out of China today, um, the paint finish is very dull. There's not a lot of luster to it at all. So um, the duller you can get it, the more, pit, the more pits and faults and blemishes you can hide under the surface of the actual shutter. So like a, a dent, um, well, they can hide it because the dent isn't being shown up in the gloss factor. Okay, so. Just as important, uh, when you're obtaining a quote, just as important as, as uh, getting what you feel to be a good value for money in purchase on your price is the installation. So um, in a lot of cases, there are many, many retailers out there that sell plantation shutters, um, but is the installer quite capable of doing the install um, and you know, fit, fit for the value for money that you're, what you're buying? So you can ask, the retailer that you're getting a quote off for the reassurances as to what qualifications they've uh, they have in installing. Um, are they a carpenter? Are they a joiner? Have they been selling cars for the last 15 years? Um, so that you sort of got a better idea on what kind of installation you can expect. Because in a lot of cases, a quality shutter can be let down by its install, and a poor quality shutter can actually be lifted. Scott, many thanks for your time. Absolutely brilliant. You're I'm sure we've all learned a lot.